Hey everybody, so I'm Eric, I'm from Southern California and in 2016 I voted for Donald Trump. Um, as a Christian I voted for him because I believed he was called and chosen by God. Um, I'm, I know I was bothered by the racism and, and, the, and the language and the, and the rhetoric, but um, I, I believed he w that was going to all drop, that was just a show, he didn't really mean it, that's not who he really was. Um, and he would act presidential when he became president. And I mean, I, I'm a Republican who, you know, from when I first was able to vote, um, voting again for McCain and Mitt Romney, and uh, up to 2016, I realized the party was just drifting away. And then after Trump became president, just seeing how every Republican was just defending Trump as Trump rhetoric just kept getting worse that he didn't change um, the racism kept going the discriminating the the putting down you know women and and, and people and name calling and just the, the, all the tweeting and just the immaturity and just no character you know temperament so so short um, he was not looking to heal and unite. He was defying. Uh, he was just careless. And, you know, when he called, you know, Colin Kaepernick and athletes who were protesting peacefully, peacefully kneeling, the SOB, and nobody said anything. No Christian, no Christian respectful leader said anything. They were easy to mention about Obama's failures and what he did wrong, but Trump never said anything. They defended him. It kept getting worse. Trump f coming out to have an affair before the election and then paying off her, what the person he had an affair with while he was president, $140,000. That was a line that had to be crossed, but Christians still didn't do anything. And then Brett Kavanaugh, so quick to easy, um, just shoot down a woman that, you know, had a, an, a um, sharing a story and, and nobody gave her a chance. And to me, I'm like, what if that's your daughter? Like, and, and something like that happened, but nobody cared. Nobody gave a chance. Right. And then the fact that he asked the foreign government to in on national TV to interfere in our elections and no Christian cared. And then just you see Congress, Republicans did not want to impeach him and then did not want to remove him. And here's the most bizarre thing. You have a vice president who's Christian, right? Um, he may not be perfect, but if you remove Trump, you get an actual Christian in the White House who's gonna actually pray, who believes in the Bible, uh, who be actually believes in Jesus. And no Christian wanted that. No Christian called that out. Hey, at least we're gonna have by, you know, Mike Pence as president. Nothing. And so it was just so bizarre that Christians kept defending, defending, defending Trump and normalizing him. Um, and did not want to see a nation healed, but a nation more divided. So, and then of course the pandemic and you just see how bad it is and how um, he's not equipped to he lead this country when it comes to life and death situation. And again, blaming and blaming every taking responsibility. So in 2020, I can't with a good conscience as a Christian, uh, as a pro-life Christian to vote for Trump. It's, I would have to go against my faith. Um, it's, it's impossible. So righteousness has to go first. Character has to go first. Someone who's looking to heal and and not divide. Trump is not the person who's going to heal. And so, please, Christians, wake up. Um, you know, you don't have to vote for the a party, but you can vote for the person. And you know, wake up. You know, I live in a blue state, a strong California blue state. So, me not voting for Biden is not going to matter. But yeah, I will not be voting for Donald Trump in 2020. Thank you.